Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm taking a brief interlude from motherhood um, to give you guys some exciting news, but also to answer some questions that you've had about Auric. And if you don't know what Auric is, allow me to introduce you right now, okay? Maybe I'll put the video, the actual introduction video down below if you wanna click through. Will I remember to do that? Who knows, we're gonna have to find out. Auric is a, a makeup brand that I started with my mom <laughs> and the rest of our team. We're a small little team. We're small but mighty, you know what I mean? Anyways, a grand occasion, okay? I've had people yelling at me about restock for so long <laughs> and how long the restock is taking. I know I'm gonna explain in this video why restock takes so long for us, but by the time this video is out, presumably, we have restocked Morganite, which is the lightest shade of Glow Lust, just right out the gate. If you're confused about why only one shade is being restocked, listen, okay? <laughs> you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, okay? <clears throat> Here's the situation. It's not being discontinued. So let's just take a deep breath. That probably made you more on edge, if anything. After launch, one of the largest requests we got was for a lighter shade than Morganite. Um, and so immediately after launch, like the next day, we kind of started having discussions around like, okay, do we want to introduce an additional shade that's going to be lighter? Um, do we want to change the existing Morganite? And we kind of went back and forth around this. Um, so we started developing a lighter version of Morganite immediately. And we kind of like went through trials with it tried it on different skin tones and stuff like that, like really, really fair people um, to make sure like, okay, does this work? And the people that couldn't fall into selenite, would this shade work for them basically? So in my original video, I spoke to the fact that we wanted this whole range to be really flexible. Typically most people can wear like two shades, sometimes three shades, but that was kind of like one of the gaps that we were missing in the range was like a really, really light shade. So we, decided to adjust original Morganite shade to be 10% lighter and it's slightly more neutral as well. So it's a little bit less like really strong pink undertone. It's a little bit more neutral. So that was what we decided. <laughs> I think there's gonna be people that are upset about this because if they bought the original Morganite, it was like the perfect shade for them. I totally understand. If you wear original Morganite, you probably could wear the new Morganite, Morganite 2.0. That was something that we wanted to make sure of when we were kind of developing the shade was that like the people who liked the original shade weren't going to be kind of like left in the dust. But again, I mean, there's so much product in there. I feel like by the time you get to the end of the bottle, maybe like the wounds have healed a little bit. I don't know. Anyways, we're a small brand, we're ever changing. We don't have a ton of opportunity to like expand the shade range in all these different areas so being that original morganite was so close to selenite um, we thought it made more sense to just lighten morganite slightly rather than introducing an entirely new shade and having morganite and selenite being so close still so that's my little explanation anyways basically right after launch we started working on the lighter version of morganite and then we decided to fill the order for that and then from there restocked everything else on a separate order. So every other shade of Glow Lust, I can finally give you this update. Everyone's been like, how do you not know? I, I, I do know, like I, I, <laughs> I have knowledge around when my own brand is restocking things. It's just been very up in the air. You know what I mean? Like COVID causes extreme delays in every single direction from shipping to manufacturing. I'll get into that in a second. So we didn't want to give you guys a date and have that be pushed out and pushed out and pushed out. So end of summer is again, COVID provided is when all the other shades should be restocked. So you have that to look forward to. But in the meantime, we have this new version of Morganite that's going to be stocked alone and lonely on the website right now. And all the website information, all that kind of stuff will be in the description box as well. So I guess I will have to be going to the description box to fill things out. So I will put the other video in there. I got you. Okay, one of the biggest questions that people ask about Auric is why restock is taking so long. Let me outline all the ways in which 
I'm pained on a daily basis by this as well. Trust me, I know it is the worst. Like it is truly a nightmare. Here's, here's the situation. Let me break down the restock process for it. So I have my notes if I'm looking down. So the first thing is that um, all of our components come from different places. So when I say components, I mean like not only the box that the product comes in and the shipping box that the product is gonna be shipped out to you in, but also like the cap might come from one manufacturer and the pump from a different manufacturer and potentially different countries as well. And then the glass and you know, all of these things. So all of those pieces of the packaging um, is, in our case, coming from different countries, coming from different manufacturers, each of those manufacturers will have their own lead time. So a lead time is basically like when we go to our manufacturer and we say, okay, we need more boxes, they're gonna say to us, it's gonna take this long, this many weeks. And their lead time will change based on like the time of year, how much demand there is, all that kind of stuff. So we get put in a queue behind everyone else who's already filled their orders. So lead times can go anywhere from like a few weeks to a few months sometimes upwards of like 20 weeks to get more stock of one piece potentially so even if everything else is ready to go you have every other piece of like the component you have every other component rather sorry but you are only missing like the insert disc on the smoke reflect cream <laughs> that will hold up your entire production because you need all of those components to be at your lab before your product can be filled. So that's one way that it gets really slowed down. The other thing is that all of these ingredients and raw materials and stuff like that also have to be sourced. So sometimes there are like shortages. Sometimes there are just ingredients that are a little bit harder to source. They take a little bit lo longer potentially. So that can slow things down as well. And then, <laughs> We also have the shipping from all of these different countries to the lab. Shipping by air is significantly quicker, but it's also significantly more expensive. That's an area where we don't have a lot of wiggle room being a smaller brand. Again, these are things that brands like L'Oreal and Estee Lauder have no problem doing. They can obviously afford to ship everything by air and that expedites the process like exponentially because you're not only shipping all of your components to your lab, but then from your lab to your fulfillment centers. Then, <laughs> If there's any kind of reworks that can potentially slow things down so for instance like um morganite was a pretty quick and easy change to shift that color slightly but if you did have any kind of reworks that were larger potentially that can just cause delays in terms of like going back and forth with samples and just tweaking things slightly and then also potentially you could have to um re-release artwork for boxes if you need to change the ingredient list at all that can cause delays basically just to summarize why this is so much quicker in other brands, the larger you are, the more capabilities you have financially, essentially. What we hope to be able to do in the future, if we have the ability to do so, um, is that we would be buying additional stock of components so that we have that available and we're kind of cutting out that portion of the supply chain. So that's typically what people would be doing. Like, you know, they might be buying a hundred thousand units or a million units of like their glass bottles and their caps and their pumps and all that kind of stuff. So they have that on hand. So the only lead time that they're really worried about is the lab's lead time. And that's the only thing that they're kind of waiting on. So they're able to restock, you know, within like a month, two months, three months kind of thing, rather than the position that we're in now where it's taking months and months and months to restock. So hopefully that clears that up. It is the worst. <laughs> I completely understand. Um, everyone has been very rightfully upset about it. So that's, uh, that's that. The second biggest thing that people were very vocal about, Canadians were very vocal about, is um, why am I not shipping from within Canada and why is it in US pricing? Let me just preface this with saying because we got some very passionate emails <laughs> about this and most of the people were saying like, Sam's Canadian, why is it in US pricing? Why aren't you guys shipping out of Canada? Etc. And And a lot of people too were saying like, you've complained about this before. Of course I have. It's the worst. It is, it is the worst paying US pricing and having paid that exchange rate. It's the worst paying duties. It's the worst paying for shipping. Let me explain our situation and let's all just come to the agreement that regardless of the situation, it still sucks. I get it. As with any new business, basically, 
you have to do some market research and kind of come to conclusions around like who's your consumer going to be. So we base that off of my analytics here on YouTube and Instagram. A lot of people are surprised by this, I guess just because I am Canadian, but the majority, like vast majority of my following is American. So we kind of came to the conclusion that like, it's probably pretty likely to assume that um, the majority of our consumer base will be American. On top of that, uh, we do have one of our products being made in the US. So right now we have two products in the range. One's made in Italy, one is made in the US. So based on those two factors, and also not to mention the majority of our costs are in US pricing. That's just kind of like globally, a lot of the times you're just paying for things in US pricing. Those factors kind of all played into why we chose to have our fulfillment center in the US and why we chose to have US pricing as well. It didn't make sense to us knowing that, well, rather assuming that the large, larger portion of our consumer base would be American. It didn't make sense to us, especially with that product, one product being made in the States. It didn't make sense to us to ship all of that product across the border into Canada to a fulfillment center only to ship the majority of it back across the border into the US. Didn't make sense financially, didn't make sense environmentally. So that was kind of why we made that decision. Right now, we don't really have the capacity um, financially to be able to have multiple um, fulfillment centers, but that would be something that in the future we're hoping to be able to do to kind of cut costs for Canadian consumers by having a fulfillment center in Canada as well so that we can split up our stock, have some in Canada so that if you're ordering within Canada, it's shipping from within Canada, you're not having to pay duties, the shipping costs might be slightly lower. Shipping in Canada just is expensive. <laughs> right now, we are eating costs across the board on shipping. Um, which most companies just do, and that's just, that's showbiz, you know? The, the issue with Canada, it's not an issue, Canada. There's nothing wrong with you, okay? We're just vast. We're, we're, big, we're big land, okay? So Canada, land mass-wise, is almost the same as the states, um, but our population total is less than that of just California, so we're pretty spread out, um, and that just relates to, you know, further distances having to be traveled by shipping companies, which translates to costs for the businesses, which translates to costs for the customer. It just is expensive. Like it's far cheaper for me to ship product or samples or whatever or gifts into the States, basically anywhere in the States than it is for me to ship to, you know, a family member somewhere in Canada. It's, it's just, it is what it is. Again, as we get larger, that's something that we hope to be able to do as well as like cut down shipping costs even more for the consumer. We had a lot of people kind of commenting and emailing us being like, well, Amazon has free shipping or Amazon has like whatever. I know Amazon does <laughs> and I wish we could too, <laughs> but Amazon has a, just, they, they, they have a few more dollars in their bank account than me. Not like much, you know, not a substantial difference, enough of a difference that we can't yet offer free shipping, but in the future, hopefully that's something we'll be able to do. In the meantime, this is, this is where we're at. That's kind of the explanation. And I want to just say as well, if you are Canadian and this doesn't make sense for you right now to purchase, absolutely do not purchase. <laughs> like it's just makeup. It's, it's not a necessity item by any stretch. It's shitty, I understand that, and I don't want anyone to, um, you know, be like putting themselves out to try and get their hands on some makeup. Um, we'll hopefully be around for a while, so don't worry about it, and um, as we expand, we'll try to do everything we can as quickly as we can to make changes so that we can be more accessible to um, all areas and all people, and yeah. What new projects are you working on? is everyone's question on all of my YouTube videos. Anytime I'm using something that I don't talk about, they're like, so you're developing that. Maybe I am. My hair, it's full of secrets. That's why I don't fill out my description box because it would be full of secrets. Right? That seems like a good reason now. 10 years later <laughs> on my YouTube channel, there's the reason why I haven't been filling out my description boxes. Anyways, what are we working on? So first and foremost, Again, I'm never gonna stop prefacing that we're a small brand and a small team. Things take a little bit longer for us. It just is what it is. We, we, we take the long route. And on top of that, we just have like a real tendency to be like, 
let's push this project months or years out so that we can work on this one small piece and make changes that absolutely nobody will notice, but we'll notice and we'll care. <laughs> kind of like what I've been saying the past few years and what I've really appreciated about certain brands is the brands that are choosing to release products slowly um, and not as often, but they're really thoughtful launches and they feel like products that are really well thought out and they're intentional and they make sense um, and they're not necessarily like the most trendy thing in the world, but it's something that you're probably gonna use more often. That whole mentality is kind of like what is really important to us as a brand. We wanna make sure that we're doing everything to the best of our ability. We're not cutting corners. There's my whole spiel. That said, what are we working on? We're expanding some current ranges. Do with that information what you will. We are having some exciting new things coming out around, you know, seasons in which perhaps you would be jolly. Um, maybe you would be eating cookies and gathering as a family um, if it's safe COVID wise to do so this year, you know, around that time, there may be a new limited edition, fun, new packaging. It's so nice. <laughs> there may be a launch around that time. We'll have to see. Um, and we also are expanding into different product categories. So right now we just have our eye product and our one face product. So we will be expanding into different product categories. We're working on that and uh, we're always listening to your requests. So if you have requests, request them. Tell me what you want from me because I relay that on and bring it up and then cause my team to have a heart attack because I'm like, how about we do all of these things as an option? And how about we try to do that as fast as possible? And then they're like, Sam, with what money? And I'm like, it's, if you believe it, you can achieve it, <laughs> which doesn't actually translate as in business, it turns out. But keep requesting things because um, we love to hear it and it uh, just helps us to, you know, change things and make things better and hopefully have like the most perfect refined range ever. That's not a lofty goal. A lot of people have asked what the process is of creating a product. It's long. I'm going to, I'm going to, I have to like set up my phone so I can like read the notes because this part is so long. So the first thing that happens with any product creation is like the concept phase. So we will kind of come up with what kind of product we're wanting to create and why and what's going to make that product kind of different or better than other products we've seen that are similar and then we will start discussing that on all of our calls like what what do we want to have the packaging look like how is that going to work functionality wise what do we want to change about this what are the issues we can see coming up with this product this formula this packaging whatever and we try to work out all those kinks before we even start like going to labs and manufacturers with the product idea and then at this time too we'll also kind of have um i have so many like shitty chicken scratch drawings that i've sent through to my team being like this is this is what you have to go off of for packaging does that make sense for you no okay we'll have to talk about it further um, but that's kind of what we do first we just have a lot of conversations we talk about um, you know like how to make our products more inclusive like who are these products going to be really beneficial for what can we tweak to make sure that this is more flexible what can we tweak to make sure that it's more versatile all those kind of little conversations is what we have uh, first and foremost before we start like working on anything um, physical with labs and manufacturers then we typically will start reaching out to um, labs so once we have an idea of like okay we want to produce let's say like a cream product and we want it to have this kind of consistency and whatever we'll start reaching out to labs that we know um, you know specialize in those kinds of formulas and stuff like that you might kind of be talking to like two labs at once potentially three labs at once who knows um, and just sort of getting samples back from them of like base formulas that they have on hand so that you can decide okay do i want to rework a base formula of theirs and add ingredients that I know that I love or make changes to the texture um, or the consistency or whatever. 
Um, or do we want to create something entirely new right from scratch, which takes way, way, way longer. And so many labs do have just like phenomenal base formulas that you can take and then change in a million different ways. And it kind of expedites the process rather than starting from absolute scratch. So that would kind of be our next step is that we would be reaching out to labs and getting samples from them and trying out their base formulas and then nailing down what our base formula is going to be, how we're going to make changes, if we're going to start from scratch on something and getting that base formula perfect texturally making sure that like all the ingredients that we want are in there if you have anything that's like an active ingredient like in glow Lust, we have hydrating ingredients that are on active levels so it's actually going to be hydrating your skin um, so we kind of would make all those little tweaks to the base formula and then from there we would start shade matching this is such a slow process <laughs> and i make it exponentially slower because i like to mix everything myself and then always i'm like I need to stop doing that, but I never will. That's the real issue because to me like that, th this, this portion, it's like, oh God, it's like art class. It's the best. Like, it's like the most fun, just developing products in itself is like an art form, depending on how you're doing it, I guess. I typically like to mix up colors myself. So then I would mix up these benchmarks, they're called, you would send them to the lab and then the lab would start working to make um, the product in your base formula in that color and then send it back to you. Then I would have notes. I would send back the notes to the lab. They would send me new samples. This goes on for like months, if not years with like the tiniest, tiniest little tweaks. And again, it's things that are like so small and so minute and like nobody would ever notice the difference, but it's, it's important and um, it's, also fun and then when you nail it it's like the best feeling in the world so anyways that's kind of what happens next is you um start on your shade matching you can send in benchmarks like if i was like i want it to be this color exactly from this brand and this product you can send in physical benchmarks that already exist from other brands if you want for like just easy life i don't like an easy life apparently <laughs> So I mix it up with a bunch of shit. <laughs> if it's like paint or if it's like lipstick colors or whatever, like I just mix a bunch of crap together and I put it in a little jar and I send it to them. And I'm like, good luck. And then uh, we go back and forth on that forever. Then once we have kind of our shades where we're happy with and we have our base formula where we're happy with it, then we send out product for feedback. So I would send products to friends and family and influencers and makeup artists and different stuff like that um, and get them to try out the product. Because of COVID, we have been having to do this not in person where typically we would like to be able to do this in person and, you know, like hire a bunch of people and swatch the product in person and see it ourselves. But because of COVID, we've kind of had to get a little bit more creative around that. So we've just been sending out these products to people and then they'll take pictures for us in um, studio lighting, in outdoor lighting, in their bathroom, whatever, and videos and send us back their notes of like what they do like, what they don't like. And then we'll continue to make little tweaks and changes from there. And this is kind of all happening at once. At this point, we start um, also working on our packaging development and stuff like that. So as you're developing the actual formula itself, alongside that we're also starting to work on packaging because you need to be doing these things in tandem so that you actually get this product out in like a reasonable timeline and it's still never a reasonable timeline but as we're doing that we're also working on the packaging development so again kind of like the design what we want it to look like how we want it to work functionality wise what kind, what kind of issues are we running into with testing potentially so um like with glow lust i talked a lot about the pump because the pump was something that we just went back and forth on for so so long we tried so many different pumps and because that formula is a little bit thicker and as products age they get thicker even more so so we wanted a pump that was going to last throughout the entire lifetime of the product it's such a big bottle and so we didn't want it to be something where you were going to be buying this huge bottle of product and then not able to use it at some point because the pump gets clogged while we're kind of developing the packaging and kind of working out any kinks there we're doing testing as well so testing potentially through like your lab and manufacturer but you can also go to like third parties which we like to do um, so you're t testing the packaging compatibility how does this product work with the formula how does the component work with the formula we do shipping tests so um you know putting all of this product in a box shipping it around seeing like is there any kind of issues that come up do we have any kind of issues with the product breaking whatever we'll do drop tests so you literally are dropping the product <laughs> and seeing like if you have any issues with like breaking of the components breaking of the product 
all that kind of stuff. And then any kind of like sensitivity testing that we need to do, or if you were producing a product that you wanted to have a waterproof claim on, you would have to be paying for additional testing for that because to legally claim that something's waterproof, you have to go through that testing process. Or if you want to claim that it has like a 24 hour wear time, that's a different testing process that you have to pay for. So that kind of starts happening as well. And then once all of that is done, you finalize your master. So the master is what you're always going to be going back to. So we have our master retains of every single color and shade that we have developed, that we haven't developed, that we haven't released or whatever. And we keep these masters on hand because then every single time that we do a restock, we'll get sent a large batch sample and then we'll compare that sample back to the original master to make sure that everything's absolutely perfect the texture is exactly the same the color is exactly the same the like glow is exactly the same all that kind of stuff so we always compare back to that master so we finalize our master that's what we have on hand and then, then we're good to go and then we can fill our order oh yeah we're not good to go then you start planning the photo shoot <laughs> which also typically is happening kind of in tandem with everything else that you're doing. Um, so you start conceptualizing like the photo shoot, looking at models, looking at spaces, looking at photographers, looking at um, hairstylists, looking at what, what are those? Just stylists, stylists, clothes, uh, people, all those kinds of little things, which has also been <laughs> kind of a bummer because I haven't been able to be on our last two sets because of COVID. And also I had a child that came right from my body. So yeah, I wasn't able to be on set for those things, but I'm so hoping, so hoping that um, very shortly when we're doing some new shoots coming up that are very exciting, that I'll never miss another shoot again because it's like the best, it's like one of my favorite things of owning a brand. I love set days. I love doing photo shoots. It's such a blast. It's such a like good energy. It's so much fun. Everyone's just there to like create and like put in their two cents and it's just, like the best vibe ever. Like it's just such a blast anyways. So then we would start working on our marketing and stuff like that. And that's kind of the process of creating a product. <sighs> a lot of people are asking me what my favorite part is. I think I've said like four different things that are my favorite part, but um, I think like I, photo shoot days, I really do love so much. Um, but I think like getting final, final production samples is really fun because you kind of work on all of these little things separately. So you'll get like your glass bottle and you'll work on that and work on like, okay, what color do we want the gold stamp on the glass bottle to be and make those little shifts and adjustments. And then you'll be working on the cap and that's kind of a separate pro project. And then you'll be working on the pump and that's a separate project. And then you'll be working on the color and that's a separate project and the texture and whatever. And then when you finally get the production sample where now they've put your product on the line, they've started filling it, and they're gonna send you samples to make sure like, okay, everything looks great. And so seeing that all coming together, like when I get sent, you know, new Morganite in the packaging, in the box, it's all perfect and like pretty and put together. It's so satisfying because you kind of get like a little bit of tunnel vision because they are such separate projects. So seeing it all come together is like super, super satisfying and fulfilling. Um, and also just like nailing a shade, like when you've been going back and forth on a particular color or whatever, or texture, and you've been just, it's like been like months or years back and forth. And then you finally just like get it right and it's perfect. That's so satisfying. And then actually getting the product out to people was, so fun. It was like very nerve wracking and very scary, but it was also so fun to actually see people like hold the packaging and like feel the weight of it and get excited about the design and then like use the product and be excited about the formula and how it makes their skin look or their eyes look or whatever. Like that is just like such a fun thing because again, it's like tunnel vision where like you and your team are working on this for so long. And then finally, like you get it into people that have never even seen it or like touched it or anything. And seeing that reaction is like just such a great time. And then a lot of people are asking what the worst part is. The worst part is fucking waiting to release product. <sighs> it's misery. I have some loose lips. Okay. That's the truth of the matter. And having to keep secrets, is my nightmare. Like, like, 
I hated it when other brands would do this to me. I hated it when other brands would be like, hey, we're developing this new bite. <laughs> we're developing this new mascara and it's great and you're gonna love it. And then we're gonna release it a year from now. It's like misery. <laughs> like I hate sitting on a product that I love so much. I hate sitting on a formula that like I think is gonna be so great and you guys are gonna love from other brands and now having to do it with my own brand is like exponentially worse in every capacity. So that I think is the worst part is just how slow the process can be and then getting really excited about something and then knowing that it's still going to be potentially months or years until that product is like in your hands. That's the worst part. <sighs> Makes me sad. Anyways, those were some of like your main questions about Auric as a company and what it's like as a brand owner and all those kind of things. Hopefully I answered some of your cues and queries. Oh yeah, I forgot to acknowledge the fact that this is empty behind me. It's because we're in the middle of moving. We're about to move in a week and a half. So the house is like mostly packed up. The video had to happen. And so this is my minimal background for you. I have this fun thing. This is a little artwork that was made of me. I commissioned one of my favorite artists to make it. Anyways, <laughs> next time, no, you're gonna continue to see pre-filmed videos until August, but then in September, presumably, it's gonna be a new background. It's gonna be new and exciting and fun. Anyways, that's that. Um, thank you guys for your questions that you sent through probably a really long time ago, but I kept it in my notes because that's what I do because I care, you know? So I have it here on hand, good to go. If I didn't answer any of your questions, you can toss it in the comments. Perhaps I'll see it and maybe I'll address it in a future video. I don't know, hard to say, but that's that. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching. Thank you guys for supporting my brand. It's been like just the absolute joy of my life aside from motherhood, which has been truly the absolute joy of my life. They're both good fun things that are happening. It's a good year, you know? So that's it. And Morganite is now available. Again, everything else will be, Glow Lust for sure will be restocked end of summer. <laughs> We'll see what happens with Smoke Reflect. We're working on it. We're gonna make it happen as quickly as we possibly can. Um, thank you guys so much for your patience. And uh, it's out there and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.